This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they take your seasoning from your barbecue seasoning from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7 in Cary, Ohio for some good old barbecue and bingo. Come hungry, grab your bingo stamp, um, your stamper, again, at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7 o'clock. For more information about the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company and where he'll be heading to next, check out his social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, for more information. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the... Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, Marine-owned, veteran-owned, Marine-veteran-owned. I'm just going to start combining that. Marine-veteran-owned <laughs> coffee company where all of your coffee is roasted fresh to order. And if you buy it ground, it's also ground to order, of course, because that's, 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 that's the order of operations that you have to do coffee in, right? So all of their beans are also fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, we'll come back and talk about what some of those coffees are uh, in the second ad read. But for right now, you can just go to ironbeancoffee.com and find your new favorite coffee. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everyone? Hopefully everyone had a good weekend. Going to talk some... Buckeyes and boiler makers here. The the spoiler makers no more. By the way, yep. why why was everyone acting like the spoiler makers was a new? A, anytime I turned on any sort of pregame, everyone was like, "Oh, now now they're the spoiler makers." <laughs> I feel like we've been saying that on Twitter for like ten years, maybe longer than that. But we got a lot to get to, Jared. So let's let's go ahead and jump right into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Uh, Kyle, you, you made me do this recording early, so I'm a little bit groggy. I don't have enough caffeine in me, and I still got that that stuff in my eyes. Did you did you get some um some coffee from the Iron Bean Coffee Company yet? I did. I did. I did. Uh, but I got I got kind of a throat thing going on, so I did have to switch to water for the actual r- record. Uh, but, mm-hmm. I, but, but don't worry. I, I still got an iron bean sticker on it. All right. And, All right, and awesome. All right. I have Let's... some, and uh, hold on. I need to do equal for, for the sponsors there. Mad Canadian sticker too. <laughs> I'm right. an equal opportunity <laughs> shill. Let's jump right into it. Ohio State defeats Purdue 59 to 31. And I felt like it was a lot, well, especially in the first half of that it was, it wasn't even close. Ohio State came yeah. right out of the gate Took a twenty-one to seven lead in the first quarter and extended that to a forty-five to seventeen halftime lead and just did not look back from there. Your first, yeah. your first thoughts, Jared? From well, it, I mean, one, I wish game. they maybe would have looked back a little bit because um, <laughs> they, you know, not not that Purdue ever quote unquote got back in it, but but for those of us, and not that I had any real life money on it because don't real life gamble, but but. For those of us who at least had a slip pick on the line, uh, they made it a little bit nervous there for a moment. Uh, Ohio State was never in the uh, in danger of of losing by any means, but from a from a point spread standpoint, it got a little bit hairy there. And also, just like from a style point, uh, people are worried about the final score. Don't the the committee watches the games? They understand the circumstance. They they know. Don't mm-hmm. oh. But we could have won by 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 forty instead of it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and by the way, like this is who Purdue is. If you look at the stats that Purdue put up, Kyle, I think you dropped a really good stat somewhere in the Discord, uh, somewhere where you were just sort of comparing like Purdue's stats this game versus their stats this season, and for the most part, they lined up. Like yeah, they're. they're- yeah, they average about 
they averaged about 410 yards per game. You know, this a little bit more than that. They ended up 480 yards, but that, that tends to happen when Ohio State went up big and then Purdue went on to pass <laughs> pass 52 that, times in that, this that, game. Yeah, that, that literally happens anytime. A, if you go up big and the other team is forced to try and play catch up, the other team's going to score or get a bunch of yards. That's that's football. That happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, cre- I mean, credit to um, O'Connell though. He yeah, he played about he played about as well as you would expect it to. He threw the ball very well. Forty for fifty two. F- he threw it fifty two times. Didn't throw a pick, which I, I thought I thought there was going to, he, for that many times. I thought that Hase would have gotten at least one interception, but only incompleting the ball twelve times. This is who this is who Purdue is, and the type of defense that Ohio State ran. So, in this game, was more of a, hey, we're going to play a deep zone and let everything in front of us. Yeah, and that, that's how Ohio State going to win this game here, trying to trying to prevent all of that deep threat that Purdue has gotten in, in games past and won by getting those deep balls and. There was um there was long uh, drives and Ohio State really limited them and forced everything in front of them. So that's why, when you look at the final stats here, Ohio State letting up 480 yards to Purdue. It doesn't look great stat line, but the end result is a 28 point victory. Yeah, and like O'Connell has 390 yards a day, but as Kyle pointed out, it took him 52 attempts to get there. You know, you you. Ho- you hold what is a pretty explosive pass offense by Purdue to mm-hmm. 7.5 per attempt, which is not bad, which is not bad for a, for a competent passing team. Pretty uh, good. You hold David Bell to 103 yards, which like I understand like 103 yards is still a good game, but it took him 11 receptions to get there. His long was only 23 yards. Yeah, no there was no reception of over 30 yards in this game by them. <laughs> yes. By them. Yes. Um, yet, uh, this, this is, was, this was Ohio state's game plan. And I've said it a thousand times on the show and I'll, I'll, I'll go a thousand and one. I don't mind. This defense is never going to be great. I, I understand you want it to be, and I understand that some people are like, well, don't lower your expectation. That they changed their defense midway through the season. I hope everyone understands how impo- uh, correct Buckeye Zach, David Bell did not score. I hope mm-hmm. everyone understands how impossible that is to completely change up your defense as much as Ohio State did midseason, how impossible of a task that is and how well they're doing based off of that. And um, and honestly, this is better than they looked at last year, and how yeah how frustrate how frustrating we were in the twenty twenty season. But yeah, this is this is so much better than what we saw last year. Is it this perfect? is better than what we saw in no. September? Yes, much much better, especially on the especially on the um the ground game. Which spoiler, Ohio State really needs to. <laughs> Needs to keep that up for next weekend's game here. So uh, enough about Purdue here. Yeah, they're going to get their yards in Ohio State. Uh, when they got the turnovers from Purdue, they made them pay. I believe both times that Purdue turned the ball over, Ohio State scored a touchdown there. Yes. So let's let's talk about Ohio State's offense here. Over 600 Offensive yards in this game. CJ went 31 for 38. So you're talking about, we were talking about Connell being uh, very accurate. CJ, even more accurate in this game here. 31 for 38 for 361 yards, five touchdowns, and more importantly, no interceptions as well. Yeah, and he had a 9.5 attempt average, which, you know, is two more yards than than O'Connell had like again it doesn't bother me so much that O'Connell has almost 400 yards because it took him 52 thr- uh, 52 tries to get there and because Purdue essentially from 
halfway through the first quarter was playing catch up. Yep, pretty much. Now on the ru- the rushing the rushing attack here, I so happy to see Chop and that's yeah. Mayan Williams getting getting um his carries in here and very effective too. Like he very. he looked like a man man on a mission here. He led the teams with carries and yards for the team got over 100 yards, averaging 8.4 per carry and Henderson got his, his good share too. He was averaging 7.5 as well. So very, very good um, rushing from this high state team this weekend. Yeah. And I think this is one of the criticisms we levied at the coaches last week because we were pretty hard on the offensive coaches specifically last week. And one of the things we said was like, you know, we understand not wanting to overuse my or excuse me uh henderson because he's a freshman we get that but like you have mayan williams right there use him Mm -hmm. and they did this week and like you said to great effect um it was mostly second half yards ohio state never went full backups here though Let, let let me say let me just clarify that ohio state never went full backups uh, mm-hmm. They they had the starters out there the entire time. Um, now they they definitely went into a simplified version of their offense in the second half. That's for sure. And also, I feel like Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong here. Did Ohio State basically just um, basically spend the entire first part of the third quarter just trying to get Chris Olave a touchdown? That's what it felt like. <laughs> And it should have had two. Should have had two for the game, but I don't understand. Oh, it was we'll get into it, but I don't understand that one penalty that was on Ruckert. But he should have had two. Should have had two in that game. Was that? A, did he hold? Yes. Have I seen much worse? Not called. Also, yes. What? Whatever. Whatever. It's fine. Because because the thing that the the referees really look at is if your hands are outside of the shoulder pads. Here, this yeah. was all inside, which is what every offensive lineman does. They, I they think it's because there. he. I think it's because they both fell. Is is kind of, yeah whatever, whatever. We're, we're, we don't need to spend whatever. time on it. Um, whatever. Okay, we need we need to get to actually grading this team. Yep. Um, All right, so let's let's start let's start with the quarterback here, C.J. Stroud. Again, thirty one for thirty eight, five touchdowns, A plus. I get I give him <laughs> Stewart <laughs> A plus for the A plus for this game here. I. I agree. Yeah. Uh, only misses seven passes, almost 10 okay. yards per average. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Running back, running back. I would, I would also give like an a, I, I thought, I thought the running backs did very, very well in this game here. I agree. No complaints. 263 yards when Purdue, when I'm looking at the stats, Purdue averaging 144 on defense, pretty much, yeah, doubling, almost doubling that. Yeah. Great, great game. Wide receivers. What about the wide receivers here? Uh, Jason had. What, what else? Yeah. What, I, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You you were trying to build up to something, and I and I just. <laughs> Jason, Jason, nine catches, 139, and a touchdown. Wilson, 10 receptions, and three touchdowns. Oh, and also a 51 yard rushing one. Olave, Welcome to the thumbnail, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. Olave, 985 and a touchdown. A plus. Like, this is 28 oh, catches. Kyle. Kyle, 20, Kyle. 28 catches in this game between the three headed beast. Kyle, you're forgetting something because he's still a wide receiver, even if it was a run. Garrett Wilson, one, one carry, 51 yards and a touchdown. All right, tight ends. Here, Garrett Jared. Wilson would have been the best running back on Purdue's team. Statistic. Yeah. Just saying. All right, Jared. Tight ends here. What would you rate the tight ends? Uh, nothing. Nothing on the stat board here. Receiving yards. How, yeah. would, how would you? How would? How would you rate them? I would. I would probably give them like a, a B in this one. Um, they. They, they blocked thought, well. They blocked very well in this game. Opened big holes for Williams yeah. and Henderson. And I even think, and also that long run for Wilson too. Great blocking from the tight ends to seal that, to give to get Wilson open there. So I, I give him a solid B in this game. I'm, I think I'm gonna up it to a B plus because they really did a great job 
I thought passing the ball or excuse me, uh, blocking on the run right. game. Right. I, well, I'm 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 up for bumping that up to a B plus. All right, we'll, we'll we'll do a B plus then. Looks like looks like our Snoop Cats here won an A here, so we'll we'll average it out. We'll do a B plus here. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, they weren't really asked to catch either. Offensive linemen here, Jared. Again, allowing two or yeah, letting the running backs get two hundred sixty three yards, eight point five per carry, no sacks. Much much better than the past two games here. Give the offensive line a solid A in this game. I know you got to go A plus. No sacks. Um, a rushing at what would the do we have a rushing average for the entire team? Uh, but even if we don't, like 8.4 for Williams, 7.5 for Henderson. Garrett Wilson breaks a 51-yarder. They were running the ball all over the place. I don't remember Stroud dealing with pressure. I, I cannot remember a single play in which Stroud was pressured. Um, you got to give him an A-plus here. And by the way, Purdue has a good defensive line. We yep. talked a lot of, a lot about it in, during Know Your Enemy. They have two guys in particular on that defensive line who are very good players, very, very good players. And we just didn't hear from yeah. them the entire game. I mean, I mean Carl Aftis, how many yeah. tackles does he have there? Three. He had three tackles in that, in that game. Really limit him to making any any impact in this game. And credit to the the coaching staff to putting a game plan to, to reduce – his effect and really it was he was he was a non-effect in this game and they have a really great defensive tackle too which was my big concern like i i marked him as the purdue player to watch and i i, I marked I, I marked uh johnson jr as the ohio state's player to watch and like that that to me was huge and as much as carl Aftis gets all the attention they have at least one really good defensive tackle. And that's been Ohio state's issue is that internal blocking. I have all the faith in the world in Dwan Jones and petite free. Uh, give, put them against the best tackles in the country and let's see what happens. I, I, I give them all of the faith in the world. My, yeah. my concern right now is the interior offensive line and Purdue had dudes. Uh, let's let's not mistake that Purdue had some dudes in the, in the interior of their defensive line, and Ohio State did a great job. They exceeded my mm -hmm. expectations. A plus. Yep. Brant, Branson Dean. Um, yeah. The, the really good defensive tackle. Nothing on the nothing on the stat board, which I know sometimes defensive tackles don't really right. make an effect on the stat on the stats there. But no sacks, no tackles for loss. Great great job by that interior, as Jared said here. I think it's now. I think this is a good time before we talk to the defense here to um, do a quick ad break, Jared. So why don't you kick us off? Tell us a little bit more about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company. Let's let's take a look here. Let's go to the all coffee section on the website. Um, yeah, Iron Bean Coffee Company, uh, Marine veteran owned company. Um, holiday season coming up. You can do gift cards. Uh, you can get free shipping over $50 if you want to buy a bunch of coffee for a bunch of people. Uh, you can. Uh, let's see if they have the shebang. Nope, shebang's still out of stock. Sorry, everybody. Um, if, you, if you have coffee drinkers in your life who aren't, like, serious coffee drinkers, for lack of a better term, uh, there's a flavored section. So let's take a quick look at the flavored section. Uh, cinnamon roll still sold out. I was really hoping to do a thing where I'd be like, hey, everyone, the cinnamon roll. Nope, it's still sold out. Sorry. But I think the lesson to be learned here is to make sure to buy. If you have your eye on that one coffee, make sure you buy it. Make sure you buy it because, uh, you know, the supply chain is what it is. So, uh, cinnamon roll still sold out, but the, uh, salted caramel mocha, the vanilla hazelnut, the butter pecan, uh, the peanut butter chocolate, the banana foster, the grog. The white chocolate peppermint, which is, I believe, seasonal, so that was out of stock all year. Make sure if you want that, make sure to grab it now. Um, the blueberry, the mom's carrot cake, also currently sold out, and the mint chocolate chip. All, all, all those except the cinnamon roll and the carrot cake in stock. If you want it, make sure to get it. Make sure to get it early because supply chain. So with all of that being said, uh, I just you can just go check out Iron Bean Coffee for yourself by going to ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the, our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. 
Um, Mad Canadian, again, will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7 for some barbecue and bingo. And let me read you some reviews from, from customers who have had some Mad Canadian uh, food. Uh, here's one just recently. Uh, uh, here's a woman here just said, awesome barbecue uh, pulled brisket. Loved it. Husband loved it. Can't wait to have it again. Um, here's another one saying, the again, talking about the pulled pork here. It was lean and delicious. The chicken coleslaw and dill potato salad were homemade and were great. We'll definitely eat here again. Uh, there's so much more great reviews from the Mad Canadian. So if you're if you're not sure what to have for dinner Thursday or heck, just throw away your dinner plans. Head on over to Cary, get some good old um, barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. And tell him the fellas over at the Sloopcast sent you. Uh, check out his social medias for more information about him and his food truck and where he may be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's grade that defensive side of the ball. What do you say? Yes, sir. So no, I don't think we're gonna be. I just want to. We we stated a lot at the beginning of the show how much um, we felt like the defense was getting a little too beat up maybe on social media and other places. Um, so we're going to be a little bit tougher here as far as our rankings, but I'm just letting you guys know right now that I don't think we're going to be as hard on the defense as you guys want us to be. Um, maybe a, aside from a spot or two, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it, Kyle. Yep. All right. So let's start with the defensive line here. So overall, again, defensive numbers here, 481 allowed, 390 in the air, 91 on the ground, but they did recover a fumble as well. Yeah. Yep. So the defensive line here, letting up 91 on the ground, about 4.8 per carry. Uh, they didn't really get any pressure on, on the quarterback, but I want to play devil's advocate here because I know – as Jared said, just defense getting really pushed around on social media. The quarterback O'Connell threw the ball like within like less than three seconds. Like it seemed like yeah. every throw, every throw that he that he made was to just quick slants, quick um, three yards and out, or bubble screens. So it, their offense game plan was to get rid of that ball quickly. Yeah, and which is why, which is why you don't see a lot. That's why you didn't see a lot of deep throws. That there was a couple of them. The one touchdown that um, where the where the fullback. I want to say he's a fullback, <laughs> uh, uh, or the yeah. running back. He technically he, a yeah. running back, but he, he's yeah, the a running back. The running back um, was on the trips wide, and no one yeah. got him covered. But yeah, I, I'd probably give the defensive line probably like a C plus in this game. I'd like to see yeah. a little bit more pressure in, in this game, but they, they did, they did enough to, to stop them on, on key third downs though. So maybe a C plus. I think C. a C plus is fair. Um, yeah. I, I want to say that's fair. It was, here's the thing. And one of the reasons why you saw Purdue put up as much yards as they did was because it was Ohio state's game plan to just put a shell over the defense and force Purdue to earn it, force Purdue to go six, seven yards at a time. That was Purdue's game plan, or that was Ohio state's game plan was keep everything in front. Cause Purdue all season had been very big play dependent, very mm -hmm. big play dependent all season. So Ohio state was like, no, we're going to make you earn it. Go, go down the field a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Now, on the other side, on Purdue's side, their game plan was to get rid of the ball. <laughs> so they they both kind of played into each other's game plan. Ohio State yeah. said, we're going to let you have the short stuff. And Purdue said, okay, we want the short stuff because we, we're trying to keep our quarterback clean. Um, yep. So Ohio State said, you can have the short stuff. And Purdue took what was given to them. So I think that's why you you saw this game on this side of the ball play out the way it did. And to Kyle's point, why we didn't see more pressure from the defensive line. That being said, I think they also underperformed. 
Yeah, I agree. I, so they C-plus. also underperformed. This is not me making a total excuse for them. I don't care how quick you're getting rid of the ball. There was not enough pressure on the quarterback this game, period. Hmm. Agreed. Yeah, so I think C-plus is, is uh, fair. Linebackers here. I want to give the linebackers a, a better grade here because one of the players that we told everybody to watch out for was their tight end. Payne uh, Durham, big, big tight end, big yep. target. Two receptions, five yards, non-existent in this game here. I give, I probably give the linebackers like a, a good uh, B in this game. Maybe, yeah. maybe you can, maybe a B plus, but I'll, I'll, I'll I, stick I, with a B here. I, th- I thought they did very well. Again, the they're still not where I would like them to be uh, when it comes to the uh, zone pass coverage. It hasn't been all season. It still showed up here in this game. Yeah, but covering covering the the tight end. Um, when they need to not, not letting big plays develop and getting um, big tackles when they need to. I, 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 th- I think they, I thought they did, did enough. And I, I think a B is uh, sufficient for me. Yeah. And you know, I know I've said it a thousand times during these, these episodes, but once again, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to say it a thousand and one, we grade based off of expectation. We have a higher expectation for the defensive line than we do the linebackers based off of the amount of talent available, right? Mm-hmm. So even if the linebackers and the defensive line have about the same quality game, the 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 linebackers are going to get a higher grade because they're kind of trying to mishmash some stuff. I mean, the yeah. best linebacker on the team right now, if you don't count the bullet position, if you so not counting Ronnie Hickman, essentially the best linebacker on the team right now was recruited to be a running back and steel chambers uh, is getting more and more snaps. I don't have any snap counts in front of me, but I felt like he was on the field much more often than he wasn't. And I feel like he's our best cover linebacker mm-hmm. as far as against the passing game. He's our best cover linebacker period. No question. Right. And I thought he did. I thought he had a couple spectacular plays in pass defense. Um, yeah, I, I, I think Kyle, would you say a B? Yeah, a B. That's that's that. I'm good with a B. I'm good with a straight B. All right, defensive backs here again. Three ninety in the air, but took him forty fifty two attempts to get to three hundred ninety yards. Well, not defensive backs, corners. Corners, excuse me, corners, yeah. Yeah, we, we separate our corners and our safeties here. <laughs> yes. So would you what would you rate the, the corners in this game here? They they really they really went after Burke. Yeah. Uh, with David Bell. And I I, th- I think that's gotta be the main focus here. I agree. Yeah, well not not the main not the main focus, but a key focus here is how well did Burke do against Bell? Well, Bell got his 11 catches. He got just over 100 yards. Did not touch the end zone. So Burke's mm-hmm. still on his streak of not letting up a touchdown uh-huh. in his coverage still. The other receivers got their yard, got their catches, got their yardage here. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm almost tempted as a whole. I'd probably give the corners probably like a B. I, I would think like a B as well. Um, I, I, I want still. I want to go a little bit higher, but sorry. Okay. Continue. I just, I don't know. It's it's tough for me to try to give them a higher grade, but I also have to take in consideration of the type of defense that Ohio State was playing too, because yes. a lot of people didn't like that soft cover or that, yeah, that soft coverage that they were giving. or giving Bell. They're giving Wright and on all of them three, five yard buffer, which they can just make their quick two yards and out or two yards and in or the bubble screens and they're getting their catches. They're getting their yards, but they made that, but they made catch it or they made tackles. There weren't many missed tackles in this game. So I thought, I think, I think B is probably sufficient to me at least. If we're grading the players, which is what we're doing here. I think it has to be much higher. I think the game plan the players were given, as Kyle just said, was to let Purdue have those three or four yards, those five yards. Then make your don't allow a big play. Don't allow a ton of yak. Keep everything in front of you. 
And I felt like the corners did that. Uh, Seven Banks got beat for a touchdown in a play in which there could have been offensive pass interference. Um, I've seen, I've seen worse not called, uh, but it could have been, it could have been offensive pass interference. Um, I don't, by the way, I don't think Seven Banks is healthy for what it's worth. I know he missed a lot of time at the beginning of the season. He's not playing up. To, I, I wonder if there's some sort of injury there. I thought Cam Brown played great. And again, grading based off of expectations, we need to acknowledge how great Burke played because he's up against one of the two best wide receivers in the Big Ten who don't play for Ohio State. Like, it's it's Dotson and Bell, right? Is there mm-hmm. any dispute of that? The, the two best non-Ohio State wide receivers are Dotson and Bell. And he played the game plan. Did Bell get a, 100 yards and 11 receptions? He sure did, but that was the game plan. He didn't allow... He didn't allow the ball to get past him um, on the in the end zone and on one or two deep balls that they actually did attempt to bell. Burke was in his back pocket the entire time. And I feel like maybe even the one deepish ball bell got maybe like 20 some yards. Burke played it great. just like you don't win them all, especially when you're up against a guy like David Bell. I thought the corners played fantastic. Honestly, I, I'd give him an A. Um, I don't know, because if you're if you're giving if you're rating all the, all the corners, like Banks didn't have a good game in this. And he no, but too, Cam so Brown that, did, and Burke did. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those are your two main guys. All right, so I'll I'll, I'll change it to a B plus then. If, okay, because because the main focus was on Burke, and I thought he did pretty well. All right, safeties, safeties here, Jared. <laughs> uh, it continues to be a, a a sore point in the defense. Yeah, and that's, I, I think I'd that's prob- all I want to say about that. <laughs> I probably give the the safeties like a C minus in here. Well, Below. at what point do we start bumping them up a bit just because our expectations are so low? Well, that, that's that's with expectations. Oh, dude. okay. I mean, that I would is say with expectations. I would say a straight C personally, but that's mostly because my expectations are are so low for the safeties right now. All right. What would you What would you say, Zach? And uh, Stewart, what would you what, what would you say? Grade the the safeties. Uh, Zach Zach gives him a D, a straight up D here. Okay, well that's that's fine. Uh, but I feel I feel like I feel like our chat is very like up here or down. Like they don't believe in the bell curve. Our chat. <laughs> I feel like they either want to hand out a, an A plus or an F most of the time. Yeah. All right. All right. Special teams, Jared. Moving on to special teams. What would you grade them? I mean, I'm willing to give them an A+. Plus. I know you aren't. <laughs> Why would you give them an A+, plus, Jared? Did they did they get a did they get a touchdown in this game? They they did not. But they they kind of did though. They they essentially recovered a a deep onside kick. <laughs> um and which immediately led to a touchdown. No missed field goals because Noah No Struggle Ruggle is on top of his game. Um, you, you know what? You know what? This is an awesome stat here. Hick they didn't punt there. until the third quarter, which I know isn't like the 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 special team's job, but yeah. Hey, hey Jared, for kick returns for Purdue, yeah. they had three returns. They mm-hmm. had three returns. How many? What were what was the average return for Purdue? I have, I have no idea. Just take a guess. I, no, no, no. Where were Eme- Emeka? Emeka averaged twenty five. Yeah, Emeka. Okay, just I want you to guess. I just want you to take a guess. Three. I don't know. Three. <laughs> so three yards per return. No, I'm sure it's much higher than that. I'm just trying to tell you that I don't want to uh, guess. Actually, not much. Just double that. Six yards. They're, they were averaged six yards per return. Yeah. yeah that, kick, the kickoff return team was just fantastic in this game. It was, couldn't ask for much better, but you know my rule, Jared. Yeah, you know I'm willing rule. to give them an A+, plus, but I know you are a Scrooge and will not do it oh, until they're... Still give them an A. A A still... Scrooge! Like, yeah, Emeka's getting closer. He is getting closer. It's just one of these times I'm just going to 
hop out of my couch and just make my neighbors upset. <laughs> uh, all right. So coaching staff here, Jared, with the coaching staff, I, I, I give the coaching staff like an A minus in this game. I thought they came out with a plan offensive yep. and defensively excelled really well. S- still wish they changed a little bit at halftime to, right. To change their little bit of their coverage, make it a little bit tighter in that second half. They just seem to do the same thing they did the first they half. They went into which... a straight up prevent. And I feel like no matter how much you're up, I don't feel like you go into a prevent at the beginning of the half. Yeah. So a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a knock there. Um, but I thought the offensive game plan was near flawless. And I know as much as people hate that soft shell coverage and letting Purdue have first downs and playing that bend but don't break, I know people hate it. I know it gets people all riled up. But you know what? It works. Uh, it worked. Ohio State won by 28 points. They covered. Yeah, they covered. All right, Jared. All right, that, that's that's it for our um our grading here, uh, we do have quite a few questions here, so we need to jump right into them here. Let's get rapid fire. All right. But guys, Zach here. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, that one should go into next week. So let me remove that. Sorry. Um, you why does Morris? Ryan Day from, from Stuart here? Stuart says, why does Ryan Day continue to allow his best quarterback to rest along the sideline while trotting Stop Stroud it. out there? Stop it. <laughs> We're, we're we're not entertaining this anymore, Stuart. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Was it was it was it just me or did our defensive line not pressure Purdue? Yeah, they they did it. We kind of covered that already about Purdue's game plan to get rid of the ball quick. Doesn't give much time for the defensive line to do anything, but they still want I still want to see more pressure. Still want to see more pressure. I I, I co-signed what Kyle said. Uh, another question. This is probably a blast for me. But has LJ's coaching taken a step back? No, not at all. Look, look at how immediately impactful um, JTT and and Jack Sawyer have been. Uh, I think there's a, a defensive scheme issue. I mean, obviously there was a defensive. We changed the defensive scheme and everything got better. So at the beginning part of the season, obviously there was a defensive scheme issue. Uh, I think your two premier senior pass rushers on this team have both dealt with a lot of injury issues. Um, and again, I think there's a scheme issue, especially with the center of the pass defense being bad. Let's, let's just the linebackers and the safeties aren't playing well from a pass coverage standpoint. It, it makes yep. it harder to get to the quarterback. Um, mm-hmm. and, and also just like we have um, enormous expectations for pass rushing because of the Boses, because of chase young, I get it. And if yep. someone isn't Chase Young, suddenly that's a problem. I get it. Um, yep. But no, LJ's still the best. Mm-hmm. All right, Kabuto here asks, uh, should Ryan Day start the next game with a drive of nearly all run plays to give that o- O-line confidence? There was a first drive in 2019 where they drove with Dobbins all the way, and it was dominant. I, 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 I feel... No, I feel I feel there's there's always, especially when you get into the second half, kind of asserting your dominance, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. That that's that's always satisfying. But it it doesn't. But he, work but he out said all start the, the game. Mm-hmm. But the start I, I the tell game, you what, if you're I, gonna I just, do that, if you're gonna do that, save it for Michigan. Yeah. Come out three tight ends against Michigan. One of those tight ends, by the way, should be Dwan Jones. Just like stencil in his <laughs> his seven with a with an eight, trot Dwan Jones out there, let him play some tight end, and and just tell Michigan, hey, this is what we're doing now. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Our wide receivers are our best in the entire country. Our wide receivers are the deepest in the entire country. You know what? We're gonna let them take the first playoff. <laughs> Yep. The first drive off. Uh, here, here, here's a good question. Is uh, from Kabuto as well. Is Ohio State's performance against Purdue the offensive explosion that magnifies parallels to the 2014 Natty? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I get there's a lot of comparisons between this team and the 2014 team, which, yes, also has me excited. The early loss, the struggles that they had to but. overcome and fix during the course of the season. But. But. The defense still not up to par to that 2014 season still. No, but this offense is way better than the offense in the 2014 season. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Uh, here's a question from uh, Hoosier Buckeye Zach. Why won't Day just drive the dagger into opponents in the second half? Does he enjoy giving Buckeye Nation heart attacks? I I didn't get a heart attack in the second half. I was yeah. I was a little annoyed. I was a little annoyed seeing them continue to move the ball easily in the third quarter, but. To me, to me, it didn't give me a heart heart attack. But no, and like, like, like I've already said in this show, it was Ohio State's plan to let Purdue have the easy stuff. It was Ohio State's, it was Ohio State's plan to let Purdue have the easy stuff. It was Purdue's plan to take the easy stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's fine, especially in the third quarter. Because while Purdue did score on their first two drives in the third quarter, it took them a real long time to do it. And I, and I know yeah. that people don't like the prevent defense, and I know that people don't like the soft shell defense. I get it, but you know what? It mm-hmm. worked. Yep. All right, Nomad here with a couple of questions. Do our special teams finally get an A+. Uh, for me, yes. From Scrooge-ass Kyle, no. <laughs> uh, do we need more of a running back rotation as seen this week? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think this I is how it. it should be. Uh, by the way, li- live question from Zach. But what if Purdue uh, came back? They didn't. That that's what that's what the prevent defense does, especially when your offense is scoring practically at will. If Purdue's taking five, ten minutes, not ten, but if they're taking five or more minutes to score, they just won't have enough time to come back. Unless Ohio State's offense completely went in the crapper and stopped scoring and started handing the ball back on three and outs. Five minute, six minute drives to score touchdowns. There's simply not enough time to come back. Yep. All right. Is Harry Miller alive? Yes, he, he is living. Uh, is, is Burke the Big Ten cornerback? of the year um i I don't know they they, joey porter jr is very good there's some very good corners in the yeah uh, freshman yes (laughs) um yeah the uh freshman i think he's the freshman defensive player of the year period regardless of position I, i i i agree yeah um Let's see why. Why does Ohio State fans expect too much? That's just expectations. That's just one because some people got money on the game. So why why did everyone get real pissy after Purdue scored two touchdowns? Well, because because Ohio State was covering by half of a point at that at that time. So one that plays into it. Two people are always well, we're always trying to compare ourselves to. Georgia or Alabama, whoever the perceived best team in the country is, no matter what you say, like, guys, we're winning by 20 points. It's fine. We're winning by 21, 28 points. It's fine. And the the response you will always get back if you say that on Twitter is, yeah, but it's, yeah, but it's Purdue. What about when we have to play Georgia or Clemson or Bama? But you're not. You'd be playing a def- You'd be playing a different scheme if you were playing one of those teams. Yep. You, Ohio State was again letting Purdue have that stuff. They they aren't going to play that exact defensive scheme against yep. a better team. Mm-hmm. You play the team you're playing. All right, we got a couple of questions from Matthew OSU. Uh, what changed from the past couple of games to this games that helped? the offense to look dominant again. Um, uh, The offensive line played better. Like what there, I, I really well, hate to. Changed? Yeah. The offensive line played better. Like, why did they play better? I don't know that yet. I, I don't need to, but I just, the offensive line played better. Like 
people like to complain about play calling mostly. I don't know why that's the the go to for a lot of people. Well, I, the I offensive think, I think line also, played better, guys. It really is just that simple. Yeah. The offensive line played poorly last well, week. I, they I played saw, well this week. Yeah, and I saw and I saw quite a few plays where I say was playing a twelve formation. So that really helped to the running game. Really helped with the pass protection too. So getting that extra tight end really helped as well. Uh, the twelve group, the the twelve personnel for anyone. That's uh, one running back and two tight ends for anyone who does yep. not understand that. All right, Matthew, with one other question here: What does Burke, having by far the most tackles on the team, say about our pass defense? Um, so we focused it on not giving up the big play, so willing to give up the short passes. I believe we have said that approximately eleven thousand times this episode. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> it doesn't. It it doesn't say as much about Ohio State's pass defense as it does say something about Purdue's offensive scheme, which was get the ball to Bell as much as humanly possible. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Jared, that is it. That's it for this questions, and I think we should end the show. Yep, that's, By the that's way, all we have. So, did Burke lead the team in tackles? Uh, if I'm looking at the numbers here, do, 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 I believe he did. Uh, he did with 11 tackles, 10 solos. <laughs> so uh, that tells you right there. Like he he he's able to tackle Bell in space too. Okay, cut. I, I'm sorry. I know we we're about to end it, but we have a brilliant question from Stuart in the live chat. Okay. Th th this is this is the type of brilliance that we get. Um, this is this is amazing, and I feel like it's a foolproof plan. Okay. Should we have a running back jump on Dwan's back, piggyback style, and allow Dwan to give them short yardage? Yeah, yeah. I, I think proof. absolutely. You sacrifice the extra blocker. Um, you, you make Dwan Jones as top heavy as humanly possible. I, I mean, more so than he already currently is. And you, you just see what happens. Because I feel like if worse comes to worse, Dwan, if like the blocking's not great, Dwan Jones could just take the ball carrier and throw him over the line. There you go. And yeah. I feel like everything will be fine. Right. <laughs> and on that right. note, uh, that that's today's show. I want to encourage everyone to join our Discord server. Um, that's it. Uh, join the Discord server. Uh, check out our merch.thesleepcast.com store. And uh, we're on Twitter. Less, I barely tweeted during the game yesterday. We're, we're hanging out in the Discord server. Discord.thesleepcast.com. If you don't know what it is, it's just an app on your phone or a website you can go to. And it's... It's somewhere, it's it's like a message board, but not, because it's a live chat. So it's, quite frankly, the modern the modern iteration, a much more modernized version of a message board. It's a community. It's a community. Also, uh, if you want to give us feedback on the show, go to survey.thesleepcast.com. We're already making changes to the show and to the Discord server based off of your feedback. So... We're absolutely listening to you and your opinion matters. And you can give us that opinion by going to survey.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, nothing really. I just see, I just saw the point early, early point favorite for the Ohio State Michigan State game. What would you guess it be? Uh, Ohio State by 12. 27. What? The early Vegas Lions is 27. 27 against Michigan State? Against Sparty. That tells, Let's that go. That Vegas has no love for Sparty. Let's go. Kyle, once again, I hate to tell you how to do your job. But I feel like there's a very big item available for you for... For Kyle's corner, a very, very, very big item. Oh yes, that's right. We had a big <laughs> there we boom. Go. Thank you. There we you had go. a we had a big boom. Thank you. Um, Sunny Styles, Sunny yep. Styles committing to Ohio State. 
uh, local kid, plays for Pickerington. If anyone doesn't know, Pickerington is uh, one of the big suburbs just east of Columbus. Um, it's, it's a huge pickup. Um, you know, you Ohio State definitely feels like they should have anyone that close to Columbus for sure, but Sonny's brother plays for Notre Dame, and Marcus Freeman coaches at Notre Dame, and Marcus Freeman has a lot of connections, obviously, within Ohio. Um, it's a it's a huge pickup for Ohio State because you don't want to lose, like, but but also I think uh, aside from all of that, I think it's a huge pickup for Ohio State because the 2023 recruiting class has like their corner no, no disrespect to either of the other two guys but this is like your cornerstone guy who will lead the class like mm -hmm. the yeah, 2022 still... class has a couple leaders who are the leaders of that class um as far as like peer recruiting and all of that goes but cuz peer recruiting's huge uh, more and more it's it's becoming huge Ohio State now has that cornerstone sort of class captain, if you will, mm -hmm. for the 2023 class. Yeah, Ohio State still has to be very careful, though, because Notre Dame really, really loves this kid here. And even even the experts still have, well, granted, just one, but <laughs> still have uh, Notre Dame as favorite here. It's still a long ways to go in this recruiting process, but really good to I, see I think that he's he came in. out. He, he came out early to announce his commitment to Ohio State. I think he's in. I, I'm not worried about it. I think right. he, he took a lot of time and a, I think a lot of thought deciding between between Notre Dame and and Ohio State. And yeah. I think I think he made the choice early to lead the class. I, yes. I think that was his choice. And aside from you know Ohio State completely hitting the dumpers, I, I don't know I don't think I don't think Styles is going to change his mind here. Um, okay. Also, Ohio State legacy. Also, an Ohio State legacy, which is always nice to see. Kyle, uh, is that it for Kyle's corner? That's it. All right. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Cincinnati-based band called Motherfolk. Uh, I know I I think I played them just last week, but I'm playing them again. Why? Because they are playing at the basement, which is a uh, awesome little venue in the Arena District in Columbus. They are playing this Friday. That is Friday the 19th at the basement in Columbus, Ohio. Um, so for those of you who live in the Columbus area, go check it out. Go, they're they're an amazing live band. Um, they're 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 a rock band, but with a lot of great hooks. Incredibly, uh, just just go check them out. They're great. So, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Motherfolk. <laughs>